The first phase of the works in the construction of the new school has now been successfully completed, with the transition from the old school building to the new temporary school. The demolition works have been completed in readiness for the new construction. As the site is being prepared for the building of the new school, there is a unique window of opportunity to carry out an archaeological dig. Prior to uh, buildings actually being built, uh, we excavate the sites to see what was what was there before. The, the site's going to be destroyed by the, the new buildings being built, so we can come in and have a look to see what's there. On this site we've got occupation, uh, evidence of occupation going back over 2,000 years um, and potentially a lot more. Um, a lot of the site has been disturbed by the, the previous buildings, um, but we do have some evidence of Iron Age um, agricultural evidence and as well as Roman. Um, we do have uh, some finds that do indicate possibly Mesolithic um, occupation somewhere in the vicinity of the site um, and, and that evidence actually gets, gets into the features of the site um, in a residual way. The Mesolithic period uh, was about 10,000 years ago um, and there were hunter-gatherers, nomadic uh, groups of people who would walk around the landscape, uh, predominantly by rivers um, and they would just settle and, and actually gather food from, from the, their resources. Uh, we, we actually have some evidence of flint work uh, of the Mesolithic period on the site. And the Iron Age, um, that was roughly 600 BC to 43 AD, so it's a period immediately before the Roman period. Um, and here we've got evidence of some ditches, uh, possibly a trackway. So we're talking a, an agricultural landscape. Uh, we don't have any settlement features, but in the Iron Age they lived in roundhouses um, with thatch roofs. Um, so we're talking quite an agricultural open landscape at this particular time on the site. We're currently constructing the uh, foundation piles for the building which go down into the ground between 6 and 40 metres and support the weight of the building. So these, these are spanning, say, quite a long way then, these yeah. these Yeah, I mean, I mean if you, the planks are spanning in this side, they're spanning in between these frames. These frames are kind of, there's pairs of them, mm -hmm. about three metres apart, and then in between the pairs, they're about ten metres apart. Well, Holland Park School is a very significant secondary school. One of the key drivers for this was to accommodate um, the existing buildings across, which were sprawled across the, the existing site, to group them together and specifically to place the sports facilities underneath the new building so that it could be stacked up. That would unlock the site, making um, the external areas available for sports facilities and then placing these new ones underneath the building. As an engineer, what we had to focus on was how to take out the columns from coming down into those spaces, because obviously in sports halls and swimming pools, you want that to be a column-free zone. So we worked hard to design a frame that would enable um, no columns to be in those areas but would accommodate the spaces above for the teaching um, and um, drama classrooms. The school itself can be broken down into approximately four different key packages. 
There's the basement works, which is uh, ongoing at the moment, which is where all the foundations for the building will be laid. Um, there's a l large amount of excavation that's got to be done, which is uh, ongoing. Uh, and then there's a series of piled foundations that are throughout the building, which take the main loads from all the columns uh, and walls down into the, uh, the ground below. On top of these, we've got a, a concrete basement structure, which is uh, approximately 100 metres by 30 metres wide. So it's a very large concrete pour. And above that, the building is quite um, split between two key areas. On the eastern side, the frame is a, quite a, a standard school concrete frame um, with the, just the, the standard typical classrooms and some concrete cores to provide um, lifts and access to the higher levels. On the western side of the building is uh, where we've got all the sports facilities and the assembly hall in the lower, lower areas. And these areas require no columns um, down below. Uh, obviously, that's quite some quite long spans over those rooms. So for this side of the building, we've gone for a, st a steel frame solution, um, which is much more adaptable to long structures. Um, so the solution we've come up with is effectively pairs of frames going along the building which act as four storey high trusses spanning the classrooms above over the sports halls below. Around the rest of the building we also have the atrium which separates the two sides of the building. On the roof of the atrium is, is another steel framed roof which is glazed all over the top and around the sides as well and that kind of connects the two structures together um, above ground level.